Okay, welcome to the uh, online causal inference seminar. Today, we're uh, ex excited to have Fan Yang from Tsinghua University, who will talk about mediation analysis with the mediator and outcome missing, not at random. Um, uh, as a discussant, we're excited to have Xiaohua, Xiaohua uh, Andrew Zhu, and Emma today will handle the questions, so I'll quickly uh, hand over to her. Thank you, Dominic. Hi, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the talk. Please submit your questions through the Q&A, not through the chat, so that we can kind of better monitor uh, the questions and make sure they all get answered and posted. We do have a guest uh, in the panel, Fang Ding, who is a co-author on this paper. Uh, we'll be handling some of the questions. Hi, Fang. Uh, nice to see you. Um, OK, so I think that's about it. Uh, Fang, take it away. Feel free to share. Thank you. Um... Um, does it work? Yes. Great. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me. And uh, uh, it's really a, a, a pleasure uh, to have this opportunity to introduce our work here. Um, today, I want to introduce our work on mediation analysis with the mediator and outcome missing not at random. Uh, this is the uh, joint work with my PhD student, Shu Zhizuo, and my uh, collaborator, Steve from uh, University of Colorado, Denver, and uh, Peng Ding from UC Berkeley. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Shu Zhi and, and Peng are also here uh, joining us. And thanks, Peng, for handling the, um, the Q&A. Um, as um, people here are very familiar with, mediation analysis is um, very widely adopted um, to investigate the direct and uh, indirect causal pathways through which an effect arises. And uh, it has been increasingly adopted by researchers in, in many, many fields, including, uh, for example, epidemiology um, and uh, uh, social science. Uh, however, many mediation studies are challenged by missingness in the mediator and or in the outcome. Okay. Uh, for example, um, our research is motivated by the following study on Job Corps program. Uh, Job Corps is the um, it's an application and a training program for uh, 16 to 24 year old disadvantaged youth who were disconnected from school and work. Uh, it is um, the largest application and the training program administered by the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, the Job Corps program provides um, very intensive educational and uh, vocational training with the goal to improve those subjects' uh, economic well-being. Uh, and uh, the National Job Corps study is an experimental evaluation of the Job Corps program where participants were randomized to either um, job corps or to a control condition without access to job corps program. And because the um, educational and vocational training are um, the central elements of job corps program, so uh, an interesting research question people ask is uh, how much of the effect of job corps on um, people's earning is through uh, educational or vocational attainment. And in our study, the treatment is a uh, uh, randomized assignment of, of job corps. And uh, the mediator uh, describes uh, whether or not a subject successfully obtained an educational or vocational uh, certificate, uh, which was measured at uh, 30 months follow up after randomization. And the outcome uh, describes the uh, weekly earnings four years after randomization. Um, in this study, um, the information um, on, for example, mediator outcome, they were collected through um, interviews. And you could see that there are um, a lot of missing data uh, in those key variables of, of mediation. Um, no matter uh, for the job corps um, arm or for the control arm, you could see that the percentages of subjects with fully observed mediator and outcome are less than 70%. And uh, we are concerned that the missingness may be missing not at random. For example, if you think about the missingness in the mediator, uh, we may um, be worried that 
for subjects who um, successfully obtained a, a certificate, they, they may be more willing to report compared to uh, people who failed to uh, obtain a certificate. And missing, uh, not at random, uh, here we're considering uh, missingness that may potentially um, depend on unobservable data. Um, this type of missingness generates um, complications uh, and uh, um, presents challenge for causal mutation studies because the underlying data distribution cannot be um, identified in general without further assumptions. And most of the previous literature on um, mediation analysis assume either missingness completely at random or uh, missingness at random and consider uh, missingness in the outcomes only. Uh, we noticed two works uh, that uh, both proposed to yeah, utilize an instrumental variable type of variable to uh, identify the direct and indirect effects uh, when the missingness in the outcome is uh, missing not at random. Uh, for example, uh, um, one of uh, the work is by uh, our discussant, um, uh, Andrew Zhou, um, who proposed to uh, utilize a, a, a covariate that predicts uh, the, the outcome, but is conditionally independent of the missingness of, of the outcome. And uh, uh, Huber and uh, uh, Solovenba, they proposed to uh, utilize an instrument for the missingness of the outcome, uh, which is independent of the unmeasured confounding between the um, outcome and the missingness of, of, of the outcome. And when we have a covariates or instrumental variable like that, uh, that's great. And uh, um, But in scenarios where, say, we don't have uh, such a, a variable um, available, uh, we may have to resort to uh, other solutions. And in our work, we um, hope to uh, study and uh, and investigate uh, into the non-parametric identification of the uh, direct and indirect effects uh, under some um, interpretable and meaningful uh, uh, missing not at random assumptions. And I will first introduce the notation and some basic assumptions underlying mediation analysis. And then I will talk about the simplest scenario where we have missingness only in the mediator and the missingness is MNAR. And then I will talk about uh, our um, generalized results to the scenario where we have uh, missingness both in the mediator and in the outcome. Um, and I will talk about the uh, application results uh, to the job code study after that. Okay, uh, notation. Uh, we use T to denote the treatment assignment, uh, one if subject was assigned to the experimental group and the zero otherwise. We use uh, MT to, de to denote the potential mediator value and the treatment condition T, and we use uh, YT, MT, or equivalently YT to denote the potential outcome value and the treatment condition T. X, a uh, vector of measured covariance values which may play the role as confounders, and M and Y without parentheses to denote the observed value of, of the mediator and the outcome. Um, many mediation studies focus on um, the decomposition of the average treatment effect. And in this decomposition, um, we have another counterfactual outcome that is Y1 and zero, uh, describing the potential outcome and the treatment condition at the mediator taking its value under the control condition. And this natural indirect effect, uh, i.e., describes uh, the amount of change in the outcome under the treatment condition that is attributable uh, to the change in one's mediator from M0 to M1 uh, that is um, induced by, by the treatment. And the natural direct effect, NBE, um, describes um, or quantifies the amount of change in the outcome due to treatment had the mediator taking its value under the control condition. And we know that under um, sequential ignorability assumption, if there is no missing data, uh, we can identify uh, those average of those uh, potential outcomes. And what if we have missing data? Well, if we take a look at the non-parametric identification result under sequential ignorability assumption, um, it's obvious that 
um, the key would be to be able to identify the following two conditional distributions. One is the conditional distribution of y given t m x, and the other one is the conditional distribution of m given t and x, or equivalently, the joint distribution of y and m given t and x. Okay, so those two uh, conditional probabilities are our targets. Okay, now let's move to the simplest scenario where we have missingness only in the metadata. Um, let's think about uh, first what would be um, missing completely at random and what would be uh, missing at random. Um, let's uh, use Rm to denote the uh, response indicator of M1 if observed and zero otherwise. Um, let's um, make things simple. All the graphs uh, condition on X in this talk. Um, if this RM is independent of everything, then the missing is, is missing completely at random. You can just use the complete case uh, to um, obtain consistent results of the NIE and NDE. And if RM is independent of M, given T, Y, and X, then the missing is, is missing at random. You can also identify uh, NIE and NDE um, based on the observed data. Uh, however, as we Expand in the job corp study, we're worried that um, M may have an impact on RM, which creates uh, missingness not at random. Motivated by uh, this observation or concern, uh, we propose the following uh, missingness not at random assumption one. Uh, in this assumption, we allow the missingness in M to depend on the value of M itself. Um, but since y um, uh, is something that occurs later, uh, we think in many studies, it might be plausible to assume that the missingness of the mediator is conditionally independent of the outcome. Okay? Now, here uh, I want to present uh, some um, ideas on when and how uh, you can achieve identifiability uh, under this uh, proposed uh, assumption. Well, for the conditional distribution of y given m, t, and x, this part is trivial. Uh, this is because rm is conditionally independent of y. So you can just uh, plug in uh, rm equals y into the conditional part. So uh, this part does not, you, you don't have to invoke uh, extra assumptions. Uh, so the main task is to be able to identify the conditional distribution of m given t and x. Uh, here is our observation. Uh, so um, consider the following two sets of probabilities that are observable uh, from the um, from the data. So you can um, imagine that you have discrete cases so that they can be in interpreted as probability. Uh, you can identify from the observable data the probability of m, y, r, m equals one given t and x. And also you can identify the probability y equals y, uh, rm equals zero given t and, uh, and x. And then the idea is to, to link uh, those probabilities. And uh, under our assumptions, those probabilities can be uh, linked as, as through the following identity. And uh, uh, if those ratios in blue are identifiable, um, then uh, actually you can, uh, through um, its relationship with the probability of m given t and x, you can identify what we want. And this ratio describes the probability of non-response versus response given uh, or in each stratum defined by m, t, and x. And the question now is when those ratios can be identifiable. Well, um, this is just a, a, a system of linear equations. Uh, if you think about it, let's say that y has um, say Q number of categories and M has uh, say P number of categories, uh, then essentially you have um, Q number of equations, uh, linear equations uh, with P number of annuals, okay? And uh, those annuals can be identified if this above system of linear equations have full rank, which essentially requires the following uh, two uh, conditions. First, you need to have um, bigger than or equal to number of um, equations uh, than the number of unknowns. So the number of elements in the support of Y is not smaller than the number of elements in the support of M. 
The second one is that M need to uh, have an impact on Y uh, given T and X, okay? And the more generally, you may have data uh, that are not discrete, right? You may have continuous data and this full rank condition is generalized to the completeness condition. Um, and uh, this type of um, assumption of completeness uh, is actually routinely made in non-parametric identification um, problems, such as in um, measure, measurement error problem, in IV problem, um, in principles um, stratification problem. And the, the completeness condition holds, actually holds under some frequently uh, used parametric assumptions, uh, such as the uh, exponential families of distributions and, and et cetera. Okay. Uh, this is um, the theorem that presents the conditions under which um, we can achieve identification under uh, the proposed uh, missing assumption one. Essentially, it requires that the probability of y and rm equals one given t and x to be complete in y for all t and x. Okay, but one interesting observation is that because the conditional distribution of y given m t and x, it can be identified without completeness assumption. So in one scenario where uh, the completeness condition is violated, say M does not affect Y or independent of Y given T and X, then uh, because we can identify the conditional distribution of Y given M, T and X, it will be the same as the probability of Y given T and X under this conditional independence. And therefore you can still identify uh, as zero and ND the same as AT. Um, here are some um, simple simulation studies um, that um, examine our um, identification results. We essentially considered four setups with different relationships in the support of M and Y. For the first um, three setups, A, B, C, uh, the number of supports in Y is indeed bigger than or equal to uh, the uh, the, the support in M and in uh, beta D, the support of M, uh, the support of Y is smaller uh, than the support of M, so that the completeness condition um, does not hold. And uh, we considered um, scenario where the data was generated um, uh, based on the proposed missing not at random assumption, and uh, we considered missingness rate in M uh, to be around 20% to 25%, which is similar to what we observed in our application study. Okay, and uh, for uh, each of the data set, we applied the following uh, five, uh, four methods. The first one is a complete case analysis where we just use uh, subjects without missing data. And the second one is um, multiple imputation, assuming missing at random. Um, and the third one is um, our method incorporating the uh, missingness mechanism uh, using uh, EM algorithm where we view the uh, missing data as latent variables. And the last one is the Oracle method where we uh, just analyze those models um, by plugging in the true values of the missing data. Um, those uh, figures uh, present the box plots of uh, percentages of biases uh, with respect to the true value of the NIE and NDE. Uh, you could see that, for example, when M does not have an impact on Y given T and X, um, in such a scenario, as we explained, uh, you can identify uh, the conditional distribution of Y given T, and X, and M. So uh, with the observable data, you can easily identify NIE as zero and NT as, as ATE. And therefore, no matter what methods you, you applied, uh, you can obtain consistent results. But in the scenario where M has an impact on Y given T and X, things are different. Uh, you can see that uh, for our method, uh, which are in um, red, um, they perform sim similarly to the Oracle one, uh, which are the ones in green, uh, just with slightly larger uh, standard error. Um, but 
for both the complete case analysis and for the multiple imputation, assuming um, um, missing at random, uh, you can obtain a substantial biases. Um, and uh, this observation is consistent uh, throughout the scenarios where um, the completeness uh, condition holds. Uh, it holds uh, for scenario A, B, C. But for D, it's interesting to observe that uh, we can still recover the underlying truth uh, using our method, um, although the completeness condition fails to hold. Uh, this we think it's, it's due to the, the help of the parametric assumption. Here we impose the linear model for the mediator. Uh, but we want to point it out that when you cannot achieve um, non-parametric identification um, and you're, say, you're willing to assume some or impose some parametric assumptions, the parametric assumptions uh, may help uh, in some scenarios, and uh, but it may not completely solve the, the, the issue in some other scenarios. Um, it works for this case, but um, here uh, we did uh, another simulation, consider M, which has um, which is categorical and has more categories in, uh, than Y. And here M is generated by a, a multinomial logistic regression model, and Y is generated by a logistic regression model. Um, in this simulation, you could see that the distribution of the parameter estimates in the mediator model and in the um, uh, missingness uh, indicator model, they, they display some uh, multi-modality uh, and uh, present some um, other irregular patterns uh, when the, the non-parametric identification cannot be achieved. So um, the take-home message is that we need to be very careful when we cannot achieve non-parametric identification. Uh, the parametric assumption may or may not help. So um, we, we still need to um, examine um, whether this parametric assumption can lead you to obtain identification um, cases by cases. Okay, now uh, let's move to the more uh, general setup where we have missing this both in the mediator and in the outcome. Uh, still, let's think about what would be missing completely at random and what would be uh, missing at random for this case. Uh, let's use Ry to denote the response indicator of Y, one if uh, Y is observed and zero otherwise. Um, and uh, if uh, R, uh, the, 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 the set of um, indicators, uh, missingness indicators, if they're independent of um, everything, then the missingness is missing completely at random. And if they are independent of M and Y, given T and X, then the missingness is uh, missing at random. Uh, still consider scenarios where uh, the future outcome Y do not affect what happened in the past, do not affect R, M, and still consider a scenario where uh, we allow M to have an impact on R, M. We found uh, three um, missing not at random mechanisms that allow identification of the NIE and NDE under some uh, completeness um, conditions. Uh, this is the first one. Um, in this um, setup, um, this assumption allows uh, M to have an impact on RM, uh, but for the missingness of Y, uh, we assume that uh, this RY can be affected by RM, however, um, has to be uh, conditionally independent of M and Y given T and, uh, and X. Um, and it's interesting to observe that actually the MAR, in this setup where both M and Y may have some missing data. Um, it is just a special case of this proposed uh, missing not at random assumption. Um, let's call it uh, assumption two. And uh, um, this is uh, describing a scenario where they, um, the, if, if the subject is not willing to uh, report their mediative value, um, then um, perhaps uh, he or she is also uh, more likely not willing to report their outcome value. Um, and uh, I think it's a reasonable assumption for, for many studies and it's a concern also in many studies. And uh, this is the theorem that presents the um, conditions that can lead to identification. 
uh, essentially we require that uh, the probability of y m r m equals one or y equals one given t and x is completing y for all x and the x paired. And uh, similarly as before, um, the completeness condition here is also only used to identify uh, the conditional distribution of m given t and x. And therefore, even when m does not predict y, it or m does not affect y given t and x, uh, so that the completeness condition fails to hold, uh, you can still identify NIE as zero and NDE the same as it. Um, this is another scenario uh, where um, we can achieve identification. In this uh, scenario, uh, instead of allowing RM to have an impact on RY, it allows Y to have an impact on Y. So uh, this uh, mechanism allows both the missingness of M and the missingness of Y to depend on the missing value uh, itself. And this is describing a scenario where, uh, for example, in the drop corp study, um, you, you might be worried that um, for subjects who uh, whose earnings are relatively low, they might be um, more likely to not willing to report uh, compared to people whose uh, salary is high. Okay, so it's describing uh, scenarios like that. And it's also a, a, a concern in many uh, studies in practice. Um, the last one, um, oh, sorry. Uh, this is the theorem that presents uh, the um, conditions that um, can lead to identification of the NIE and NDE. Um, essentially, um, different from the previous uh, two scenarios we discussed, um, it does not only need that the probability of YM, RM equals one or Y equals one uh, to be complete in Y, but also it needs that the probability of y m uh, r m equals one or y equals one to be complete uh, complete in m, um, and uh, because the identification of both the conditional distribution of y uh, and the um, conditional distribution of m rely on the above completeness conditions, and therefore in such a case, when m does not affect y given t and x, the i e and then the e. Um, are no longer identifiable. And uh, our simulation results also confirms that. Sorry, it should be the, uh, the bottom figures. Okay, um, let's move to um, missing not at a random assumption four. Um, um, this is a, a scenario that I think uh, compared to the previous two, may not be that uh, plausible <laughs> in practice. It's essentially saying that it is the mediator M that drives the missingness in both M and, and Y given T and X. And uh, uh, to be able to identify the NIE and, and, and DE, um, we need the following um, completeness condition, which essentially uh, utilize uh, the effect of M on RY if there is any, and or uh, utilizing the M's effect on Y um, if, if there is any. Okay. And um, the completeness um, condition here is only used to identify the conditional distribution of M given T and X. And therefore, in this case, uh, even when M does not affect Y given T and X, you can still have an IE and NDE identified. Um, a bit of uh, summary, uh, summary of um, of the um, identification results, uh, assuming that Y is not affecting RM and also allowing M to have an uh, impact on RM, we have shown that identification of the NIE and NDE can be achieved under some completeness assumptions where RY here only depends on one of RM or Y or M given T and X. Okay? However, if Ry, the missingness in Y, this probability depends on more than one of Rm, Y, and M given T and X, then the identification of NIE and NDE cannot be achieved without further assumptions. In our paper, we present um, counter examples 
um, that shows that um, you cannot uh, actually uh, achieve identification uh, without further assumptions. Um, but a good news is that um, if you have a future outcome, say Y star, that is measured after Y, uh, for example, in the job corp study, let's say that you have um, weekly earning that is measured, say, five years after randomization. And if you carefully collect the information on this Y star, it would still, uh, it, it can be helpful uh, for us to achieve identification. Actually, uh, under those uh, following um, missingness mechanism, you can achieve identification uh, of the NIE and the NVE by exploiting the information on a future outcome Y star. Although in our study, we don't have uh, such information available, uh, but I, I think this result is very helpful um, for the uh, study design stage. And uh, we also want to point it out that you can obtain parallel or analogous results uh, in the instrumental variable setting uh, if you're interested in identifying compliant average cover effect. Let's say that you're interested in um, the um, treatment D's impact, I mean, the, the, the total effect uh, on, on Y. However, let's say that you have concern of a measured confounding in the DY relationship. Let's say that you have an instrument Z um, that is a, a valid uh, instrument variable. Um, then in this case, you can view uh, Z, uh, the IV, plays a role as the treatment T in our uh, mediation setup and view D as um, as the mediator in the in the mediation setup and the Y is still at the outcome Y uh, in the mediation setup, then everything are parallel. Okay, you can achieve uh, identification uh, of the joint distribution of dy given given z uh, for um, under those uh, missing essentially the same uh, missing these mechanisms and. Um, um, I think this is uh, some very interesting uh, scenarios that uh, people can consider uh, if you have the uh, uh, instrument, uh, instrumental variable analysis uh, that um, is subject to missingness in the treatment or the missingness in the outcome. Okay, now let's move to the application to the job corp study. Um, the data we have describes uh, about 8,700 subjects who are randomized to uh, either job corpse group or to the uh, control group. Uh, we have described our mediator and the, the outcome. Uh, we have missing this both in the mediator and, the, and in the outcome as we described. And uh, we also have uh, very um, pretty rich information uh, on the subjects, which uh, play um, the role as um, mid, uh, sorry confounders uh, between the M and Y relationship. Um, besides the missing this, um, we uh, also have an, another complication uh, that is the outcome has um, excessive zero values and also um, pretty skilled um, positive values of earnings. And to address, uh, address this um, problem, we use uh, two part models. Okay, uh, essentially, we considered all of those uh, three um, missing, not at random assumptions. Um, we uh, described it before and considered two um, two part models uh, for the outcome. One is the two part gamma model and one is the two part log normal model. Essentially, we applied uh, six models uh, to the to the to the data. And here is a table uh, that presents the results of the NIE and NDE along with the log likelihood uh, for those six models considered, and um, you could. If you take a look at the estimates, um, they are they, they, they are some of them are quite different, right? But um, if you take a look at the confidence intervals, actually the causal conclusions um, are stay the same actually uh, across all the six models. So uh, the results are quite stable uh, across different missing list mechanisms and uh, and across different models that we uh, we applied uh, to the to the outcome. And among those six models, it is the first one uh, that stand out uh, if you consider uh, log likelihood. Um, 
all the models have the same number of parameters. So the, the first one is a two-part gamma model for the outcome um, and uh, assuming uh, the missing not at random assumption too, uh, which allows RM to have an impact on RY. If you take a close look at the uh, parameters uh, estimated uh, under this model, um, this lambda uh, M describes the uh, M's uh, coefficient in the RM model. And it is positive, um, significant at the 0.05 level. Uh, essentially, um, it is saying that for people who successfully obtain a certificate, they are more likely to report uh, this result. This is very reasonable. And also for this uh, gamma RM, uh, which is uh, the coefficient of um, indicator of the mediator RM in the RY model. Uh, it is also positive and significant, indicating that um, people who um, report their mediated value, they are also more likely to report their outcome value. Okay, and um, in this table, we also present the results uh, using complete case analysis and using uh, multiple imputation uh, by chain equations through uh, under under the uh, missing at random assumption. Uh, you could see that again, although the estimates are, are different, but the common conclusions stay the same. Um, if you think about the, 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 the method here um, for the model that stand out, um, it only allows RM to affect RY in addition to fully observed variables P and X. Um, but you may still have some concerns of what if y affects ry itself, right? And what what if m also has an impact on ry, given that m occurs earlier? So uh, here um, we address the issue through sensitivity analysis. Essentially, we view uh, the impact of m on ry and view the impact of y on ry as um, sensitivity parameters, uh, and uh, but. Once we fix the, the values of those two sensitivity parameters, uh, you can obtain NIE and NVE. And uh, we varied those sensitivity parameters um, from negative two to two, uh, and we found that the causal conclusions on the NIE and NVE are not very sensitive uh, to, um, to, to, to uh, this amount of strong impacts. Um, to summarize, um, our results uh, show some positive results on non-parametric identification of the NIE and NDE uh, when the mediator and or the outcome are missing not at random. And I uh, would like to end the talk uh, with um, the following one of our favorite statistics quotes by Cox and Connelly. Um, if an issue can be addressed non-parametrically, then it will often be better to tackle it parametrically. However, if it cannot be resolved non-parametrically, then it is usually dangerous to resolve it parametrically. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the Thanks. nice talk, uh, Fanya. Um, we're going to now switch over to the discussion. Um, sorry, wait. Ah, sorry. There is one question. Uh, there's one question that the, there was some ambiguity about that uh, I think Pang would wanted Fan to answer at the end, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a... a so there's a question uh, from Caleb Miles about mm -hmm. the setting where the M is missing. Um, and the question says, does the conditional dependence between M and Y need to hold within all strata of X, T, or just at least one. Also, oh, uh, when oh. they are independent, are you unbiased or consistent in general? It seems like if M is missing not at random, then this could induce apparent association between M and Y among the observed M data. Would this induce bias? Sorry, it's a bit of a long question, but uh, hopefully you can see it as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, oh. the... Con uh, uh, Caleb, do you, do you want to ask the question directly? Because I think it's a question about some early slides.
Uh, Caleb, you should be able to talk if you assumption would like. one. Okay, can can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Apologies for the long-winded question and any ambiguity. It's meant to it's kind of two separate questions. So the first hopefully is is clear. Like, do you need dependence in in all strata or or is just one sufficient? Uh, it should be all, uh, because given um, any X and the T, we, we want to um, identify the, the joint di distribution of M and Y uh, so that you can um, integrate out X uh, to, to identify the uh, uh, average, uh, the I and NBE um, at the population level. Okay, thanks. And then the second part was just you know, noticing in your simulations, everything looked mm -hmm. unbiased in the in the case where your assumption, your dependence assumption was violated. And of course, if you know that they're independent, then you know that it's zero. You don't have to estimate anything. I was just wondering if that is is there a general result that that will be unbiased? Uh, for some of the setups, like the the missing uh, not at random assumption one. Um, yeah, um, because you can identify um, the conditional distribution of Y given MT and X uh, without the completeness assumption. Uh, and when M is independent of Y given T and X, that probability is just equal to the probability of Y, uh, uh, let me show you, just equal to the probability of Y given um, T and X, also that, uh, you can learn that from the data, and so that the IE uh, apparently will be zero because M no longer affects Y, and uh, NBE will be equal to the ATE. Uh, but in scenarios where, uh, say, you have this missing this mechanism, um, So for this one, um, we do need the completeness condition, uh, even to identify the conditional distribution of Y given M, T, and X. So in this uh, scenario, if the completeness assumption does not hold, then you could see in our simulations, if you have y, M that uh, do not predict the Y, uh, or do not, does not affect Y given T and X, uh, you, may, you, may, you may have advice. Great, thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. Um, all right, I guess now we switch to the discussions. So if, I'm, if you could just stop sharing your screen, that would be great. Yeah. And um, sorry, Andrew, I invite you to start sharing. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's do a full screen here. Uh, let's see. Okay, can you see? Okay, well, very, very interesting talk. Uh, fam, thank you. And also other co-author, including Pong. Uh, so here, I want to uh, see some, uh, I want to re discuss about this paper uh, uh, for several angles, I think. So first is from definition point of view, and also, about the identification assumptions. So here, I understand you are only look at the look at the natural effect uh, mediation analysis. So probably it's good to also comment a little bit about what happened if you're interested in the control effect. Uh, so that's from the the mediation analysis framework. There are two. One is the controlled. One is the natural mediation effect. So that's the first uh, issue. Uh, so second actually is about the innovating assumptions. It's, it's, uh, uh, I, some is not on my notes, but I, when I listen to you talk, I just can uh, uh, come to me. I feel like uh, if you have a not missing and random, it's very similar to a major confounder in causal inference. So there are two school of the thought about how to deal with uh, not missing and random or uh, a major confounder. One is data-based, one is assumption-based. 
uh, I don't know which one is better, but I think we need to think about in the in the causal community about those two approach. Uh, instrumental variable to me is a data based assumptions. So we don't make something about the model per se, but we make something about the availability of data. I feel that one. I think I like that one is uh, the causal parameter is not changed because the same regardless of what data you have. Uh, but the model based actually, is, including I think the completeness assumptions is a model based. So model based assumption for identity actually does impact your causal parameters. If the if the completeness or the the model doesn't hold, we don't know what the causal parameter is. However, the the database is different. You always has a causal parameter, regardless of what data you have. So I think I like that approach is that you separate scientific questions from the model you are doing. So that means first we need to clear what the scientific question you want to answer. And then next we, we look at what data we need to have in order to answer that scientific question. I think those are two school of the methods to deal with on major confounder as well as long missing at random. My understanding, your approach actually, uh, instrumental variable is database. However, I think instrumental variable does only look at the local effect, but but less about instrumental variable alike or instrumental variable uh, uh, type of the approach is your causal parameter does not not change even you don't have data. Uh, my understanding here is that completeness actually, I know that has been used a lot. Uh, does impose the assumptions on the joint distribution functions. So even actually it's very complicated. I think one of the reviewer, one of the audience also raised about issue because you have to assume that for all the small m, small t, small x. So that's a very, very strong assumptions. And because we don't observe all those small m, small t, small x, particularly the x is continuous variables, the, the small one. So, so the issue is, even though I think that we call it a long parametric, but issue is what is exactly imply the completeness on the joint distribution functions uh, where you have, I think mathematically is a very beautiful assumptions <laughs> because uh, when you think about it, the completeness use a lot is in sufficient statistic to say if you have sufficient statistic and then you want to figure out the answer is statistic and sufficient state, what's the relationship? So that they introduce that completeness there. I know the complete has been using a lot of content, but we still need to think about it. What really mean to the, our joint, uh, to our distribution functions about completeness? Uh, uh, so, so anyway, so the issue here is I think the model-based uh, assumption versus uh, data-based. I think that's actually, I. I think it's, uh, I'm not just for this paper, as for other paper published, I saw is has similar issues the model-based versus uh, data-based. Uh, personally, I like the data-based because uh, you separate scientific question from the model because your your causal parameter will be the same regardless model two or nine. Uh, uh, so that's uh, the, uh, the, the issue. Uh, so third issue is about uh, how do you make sure those identification assumptions, including completeness, hold in your simulation? Uh, data you generate as well as uh, real data. And uh, uh, because if those something doesn't hold and then we don't know what we are estimating the causal parameters. Uh, so so that's probably we need to think about it to to say, to make these more interpretable, the assumptions. Uh, even though I, uh, and uh, uh, for so for simulation, I also like to see what happened uh, if those, let's say completeness doesn't hold, what will happen to your estimators? And does the has a big impact or less impact? So the last one is about uh, about uh, uh, the uh, uh, or the third one actually is about the if you have a two missingness the missing mediation missing uh, outcome. So I think they might have some kind of interaction between those two. And so how do you consider that interactions and then uh, how 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 that impact the results? The other related one is uh, I saw your uh, slides is you are using actually, I, I was a little bit surprised they didn't use a potential outcome framework. <laughs> I think if you use a potential outcome framework, that's maybe more clear about what assumption would be. Because I know under the ignorability assumptions, the, the, the potential outcome framework and then observed outcome, uh, observed data as some equivalent. But still, I think I would see if you write down potential outcome framework, there are some, 
rotational issue, when I try to write down, particularly when you have two missing data, a missing mediator, missing uh, uh, Y. So, so in the sense that if you look at the directions, you have first have a treatment assignment, and then have the mediator, and then has a Y. So the Y himself, actually, including the missing data indicator, actually is a function of the mediator as well as the treatment assignment. So if you write down actual potential outcome, it's kind of more complicated. So I wonder if you write down, use a potential outcome framework to write down those rotations, how that will impact your assumptions, uh, which you made on the observed data, not on the potential outcome data, uh, 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 outcome variables. Uh, so the other one I think you might want to consider about sequential equilibrium assumptions, uh, even including the examples. Uh, uh, because uh, one of the issue I have uh, with sequential equilibrium assumptions, you really have to assume even mediator uh, can be randomly assigned, giving covariance, which I think sometimes that can be strong. The treatment assignment is okay, uh, but for the, so you may want to comment on the, your examples is well sequential equilibrium assumption hold particularly for mediator part of it. Because usually I think for mediation analysis, the mediator assuming kind of random is kind of the hard to justify. So you may want to think about that uh, 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 issues. So uh, for the for the example, I think it's a very good example. Uh, uh, I do have some question about your outcome because outcome is a, is a, is a, is a cost data basically, is a, which I have done some work by the way. So I think for the cost data, there are several issues you may want to consider. One is zero cost. That's good. Actually, you consider that, but uh, but zero cost has a many way to model zero cost. You can have a logistic logistic regression or others, but more important is is that long zero cost. There there's two I think the issue with the long zero cost. One is a skew data which you consider. A lot of one actually the heterostaticity. You is in other words the variance is not constant. You for the for the for the cost data. So for the uh, for the skew data, I wondering besides the gamma, you consider uh, have you, uh, uh, also you consider log normal. So log normal is I'm not sure. Let me confirm with you. When you do the log normal distribution, do you take transformation of the long zero cost and then soon normal? Is that you? Is that a, okay? So if that's the case, actually, uh, there is a lot of issue about the retransformation because when we do the cost data, our our scientific question is not on the log dollars. If you do the log transformation, basically your unit analysis is the log dollar. But the usually people want to know what, what is the inference on the dollar scale. So you have to actually transfer back. So, so if you take the log transformation, then the issue will be uh, is the retransformation uh, bias when you transfer back. But if you do the gamma, you don't have that issue because you direct the model on Y. But on the other hand, the gamma, I feel like the, the skew, uh, skewness is not too, too too high for the gamma distribution. So you may want to consider maybe other type of the skewed data to analyze the cost data or have in your application, have you have you do some like testing to say whether gamma distribution is reasonable or not normally reasonable. Uh, or also uh, in, the, in your example, actually you do the multiple invitation, which I mean, I understand is the multiple invitation is doing under missing a random assumption. But when we look at the results, I mean, they're not differ too much from long, not, not, not at random assumptions. So maybe you want to consider uh, uh, missing a random assumption, non missing assumption, which one is more appropriate? Is missing assumption possible if you have a lot of X, for example? I mean, in your data probably have a lot of X. So, so basically the issue is, uh, can you make missing a, uh, missing a random assumption giving a lot of X or you don't use a lot of S, but still use not missing a random assumptions. Because I feel like not missing random assumptions, you have to make more assumptions, basically. Okay, so that's all my, uh, uh, the, oh, by, finally, I want to mention something about the causal inference assumption use my time. So we have uh, uh, six uh, Pacific causal inference assumption uh, to behold in China, Shanghai between July uh, five or six. So the, so for the people who are interested to go uh, work on this, let me know. Well, anyway, very, very interesting to talk. Thanks for letting me to be discussed. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, fun, if you want, you can uh, respond. Yeah, thanks so much, Andrew, for the excellent, excellent comments and, and also suggestions. Um, so, um, um, 
there are some things that I, I believe uh, we, we should um, study um, carefully um, in the future. Uh, and for some of the clusters, for example, um, for the let's say that we're interested, you asked about the controlled direct effect. Uh, I think that one can can also be um, be solved um, because essentially we are identifying the conditional distribution of y and m given t and x. Uh, so so if 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 that is identified, then based on the identification. Um, result on the controlled direct effect, you can, you can also identify that. So, so that part, uh, there is no issue. And I really love your comments on uh, model-based assumptions and uh, on the comparison of the model-based assumptions and the data-based uh, uh, assumptions. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, when you have a, a good idea available, um, uh, it's 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 good to 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 use that uh, without assuming, for example, uh, completeness assumption or or invoking um, some parametric uh, assumptions. Um, I think it's it's like a, a sequential process. Once you when you have a data or a question uh, there, uh, you may first uh, see. Oh, do I have a, a nice uh, IV that I can utilize? If so, then go with that. Uh, if not, then uh, perhaps people have to resort to other other solutions. Uh, and uh, if people have, I mean, even if people have the IV, I think people can, can still say, for example, um, analyze the data um, and the different assumptions and to see whether you can obtain um, consistent conclusions. I, I think that um, uh, gives if, if so, then it gives us some, it gives us some confidence uh, in our um, conclusions. Um, and um, uh, in the simulation uh, studies, uh, we, we showed some scenarios where uh, completeness uh, assumption uh, does not hold. Uh, for example, when M does not uh, affect the Y uh, given T and X, uh, and uh, in our simulations. Um, we simulated the data through parametric models. And for that, those parametric models, uh, there are indeed some assumptions uh, um, on, the, on the parameters. Um, for example, uh, well, that, 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 that gives us the completeness condition. And uh, we, we presented uh, when uh, those model, um, under, under what conditions, um, um, you can you can you can have completeness uh, condition uh, under under the models that we considered. Uh, essentially, um, I think uh, we need um, AMP's coefficient to 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 be not zero. For example, if you have a, a linear model uh, for the outcome uh, given MT and X, um, and uh, uh, also uh, for the questions on T and uh, X. Uh, yes, uh, for our uh, result, if you focus on um, the average uh, of the direct and indirect effect over the population, uh, we do need for every x, uh, you, you have to have the completeness um, to get non-parametric identification. Um, but let's say that you're interested in a subpopulation, uh, an IE and an DE, uh, given some values of the, uh, given the particular value of x, uh, then you only need the, the completeness condition to, to hold uh, for, for those particular values of X. Um, and um, um, uh, um, can I can I take a look at the uh, some other question? Oh, you also asked about the um, application part, yeah. For the, yeah, for the application. The cost data. Yeah. Right, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, we, we should investigate more. And also sequential ignorability, um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a challenge uh, for most of the mediation studies because um, um, cannot be randomly assigned uh, in general. And in our study, uh, yes, if you consider, say, uh, for example, um, some some latent ability, right? You, you won't be able to measure fully measure a subject's ability, and which may potentially affect both um, mediator and and the outcome. 
um, if if that is not fully measured, then yeah, uh, we we potentially have the violation of the sequential ignorability, and uh, I think a sensitivity analysis might be the way to go. Um, and uh, for some notation issue, um, right? I, I think it's a very good idea and uh, excellent suggestion. Uh, we uh, should consider um, using the potential outcomes uh, also for for the uh, potential missing list indicators uh, to um, I mean, consistent <laughs> everything consistent using the potential outcomes framework. Um, yeah. Um, Did I miss any of your questions? I, I believe there are some questions that I- No, I think that's, that's that's very good. So we can talk more actually when we get back yeah. to China. They go, it's a lot of audience maybe ask questions. Oh, thank very you. Good. Thank you very much yeah. for answering my question. Thank you. I think we're slowly like running out of time. So I'll just uh, quickly wrap up. So first, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Fan, for a very nice talk and Andrew for an interesting uh, discussion. Uh, thank you also everyone for coming and to uh, Pong and Shotzi for helping out in Q&A. Next time we're going to have Ting Ye from uh, University of Washington who will talk about the bias multivariable Mendelian randomization. Uh, thank you all for coming. Hope you have a great week uh, and see you next time. Bye-bye.